Second question that was given to me, and, and actually, um, I couldn't actually include the note where the question was given because there were 11 questions on one page. So I just picked one for today. Uh, the question is, how do I answer the New Age movement with truth? That's a good question. First, I would say you, you do so in love. You speak the truth in love. That, that your motivation can't be that we're right and you're wrong. Your motivation has to be that, that where they are is going to take them to eternal damnation. And, and your heart needs to be you want to rescue them. You want to, see, you want to throw them a lifeline. Try and bring them in to safety. Okay, so the attitude that you go into this is, is significant. Okay? I, I've seen too many people that go into it with an attitude of we're, we're right and you're wrong and I'm going to prove it to you. And you know, I, I read something a long time ago that says that arguments never accomplish anything other than to give the arguer more defense. Every time you argue, you just build up your defenses more. Um, scripture says, let us reason. Okay? We speak the truth in love, but we, we, we do have to speak the truth. Okay, and, and love doesn't necessarily mean pudding or gush. Sometimes love is, is hard because when I'm teaching my kids um, not to play on the fireplace, there might not be a fire there now, but there will be a fire there. And when I want them to understand this is dangerous for you and, and they're not getting the message, um, we have to be firm, okay? Um, we speak the truth. We don't, we don't cotton ball it. We don't soften it. We don't muddy it. We don't water it down. We speak the truth, but we do so in love. So a couple things about the New Age movement that you might need to know might help you. Um, first, it's not new. Um, this was birthed out of the Eastern mysticism. Um, way, way back, we're talking thousands of years ago, so it's not new. Um, the people that are caught in this are taught to uh, subsume their thinking. They, they have to deny their thinking so that they can open themselves up to have a what's called an ascended master or a spirit guide, a spirit teacher that will come in and, and teach them truth and teach them life. This is a pantheistic theology. God is in everything. Uh, God is everything. And if God is in everything and is everything, he's in you and you are God. You just need to understand that. You need to grasp that. You need to get that into your thinking. Problem with that is Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10 says, I am God. There are none before me, and there will be none after me. There was a t-shirt that I really wanted to get years ago, and I regret having not gotten it. It says, uh, two things in this life are certain. One, there is a God. Two, you're not him. Okay? So, knowing these things, knowing what the goal is, because ultimately the end result of what the New Age movement is pushing is they want a universal consciousness where all of our thinking is the same. They want a, a new world order with a one government, one thinking, one theology. The, the, the problem with that is um, it can't sustain itself because <clears throat> there is no right or wrong, there is no good or evil, things just are. Okay? And, and things break down because, uh, you know, the law of entropy. Things don't build themselves up on their own. They have to have some external force to build them up. We saw this yesterday. Uh, for those that didn't know, um, a, a bunch of the men got together yesterday and built a ramp for Ted and Mary Lou so it would be easier for him to get in and out of the house. A huge thank you to Gordy for overseeing the project and getting the ball rolling and Robin for helping him out getting measurements and, and getting material and coming to help put it together for Mike and Josh and Benjamin for Alan, uh, all coming out to help out a, a church member, a family member that was in need. Uh, and, and Ted and Mary Lou now have a, a ramp over at their house to get out. Um, so it was awesome to see the church pull together and to, to represent and help one another. But, um, you know, 
this universal consciousness, the, the whole idea is that you've got to open yourself up to teaching to some spiritual entity. Okay? If it's not God, who is it? Satan. Satan. And, and the teaching is that they're an ascended master. They're someone that's gone on before you and, and just achieved a higher place than you. And, and now their purpose is to bring you up <coughs> to where they are. But when you open yourself up, you throw open the doors for anything and everything to come in, guess what comes in? Anything and everything. Okay? And, you know, Psalms tells us um, that uh, any other god it is a demonic influence, okay? So the, you need to understand that these people are caught in a trap. They are being deceived by the enemy. They, they will have seen and heard and done things that, that even may appear miraculous. The enemy can counterfeit those. That's, that's how the enemy's gonna get a lot of people to follow him in the end times. He's gonna do the miraculous. Okay, but if you are not on your guard, if you're not paying attention to what's said, because scripture says, hey man, even a prophet comes among you and, and what they say comes to pass, but then they tell you to follow another God, they're not a prophet of God. You gotta, you gotta put them out. Put them out from among you. Okay, so how do you um, speak the truth to them? First, you speak it in love. Second, you check your motives. Check, check your motivation for going in to speak to them. Okay, if you're wanting to get into um, a contest to see who's more intelligent or who's got the better theology or who knows more, who can quote more, don't, just stop, okay? Um, we have something that the world cannot take away. The world will try and discredit God's word, but the world cannot discredit what God has done for you, okay? what God has done in your life, the person that I was before he came into my life, and the person that I am now after he has come into my life, that's, that's, that's two completely separate people. And nobody can take that away from me, okay? So understand that they may use some of the same terminology that you do, but with entirely different meanings. Know the word. You, you, you can't expect to, to go into battle with a paper sword. God didn't give us a paper sword, you know. Um, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, capable of dividing between the spirit and the soul. And the, uh, the you got to know the word, guys. you got to memorize it. Commit it to memory. Get it deep in your soul. Play it as you're going about. I don't have time, Pastor. i got stuff to do. Hey, man, if you got idle time in your car, get a Bible on tape or a Bible. They don't have tape anymore. <laughs> A Bible on something. Most of you have a phone that can play it. Okay? And just, just let it soak into you. Dedicate yourself. Take a passage of scripture. Say, you know what? This week I'm going to memorize one verse. And, and take that verse with you everywhere you go. Look at it throughout the day. Hey, you're eating your, your, your Danish and your coffee. Read that verse. Go over it several times. Get it in you. You sit down for your burger and fries. Or whatever you guys eat. Um, salad. You sit down for a healthy salad and, and a protein shake. Read your verse. You know, let it soak into you. I guarantee you, when you apply yourself to learn the Word of God, the Spirit will respond and it will teach you the Word of God. Okay? And when that time comes and, and you're talking with someone and you need those scriptures, guess what? They're going to be there. 